All right, guys. Um, thanks for joining me today for the nature of the beast. That's that's what the sermon is called today. The sermon today is called the nature of the beast. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for what you're about to teach us and speak to us. God, and I just pray that every heart, every soul, every spirit that is hearing me, Lord Jesus, receives something from you today. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, I forget what um, what happened, but sometime last week, I had a thought, well, that said, well, that's just the nature of the beast, meaning that's just life. And that's how it worked out. I don't think something worked out for me the way I wanted. So I said, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, and that, and God said, that's the title of um, this week's sermon. And so this week's sermon is called The Nature of the Beast, uh, meaning two things, the nature of life, and um, I'm going to talk a, a bit about uh, what I've experienced the, the demonic nature to be, but let's first talk about life before we talk about the devil. Um, sometimes there, there is not a person in this life who has experienced some kind of trauma, some kind of pain, some kind of upset. And, um, usually when we experience serious trauma, serious pain, serious upset, we, we search really hard to find a reason or something to blame, but sometimes that's just the nature of life, that's just the nature of the beast, that's just um, the nature of how things roll, and if we if we are um, aware of it, it can it can teach us something. This this thing called life. Um, I think that every I've said this before. Everything you go through, it it can either make you stronger, or like it could just. Um, tear you apart. You have a choice in how you take the things in life. It can either make you stronger, it could tear you apart, it could keep you down for years, or you can use it, use whatever is fuel to, um, to take you higher or raise you up. Um, it was funny, I was talking to someone this morning. They said, oh, I'm, go I'm going to think positive. And I, I said to myself, that's interesting. Um, po positivity is a choice that we, we have to um, make a choice every day because the Bible said we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So our default setting is negativity and positivity is a choice that we have to make every day. And dealing with this nature 
uh, of the beast, this nature of life is it can be a learning experience or it can be experience an experience that'll knock you down for the count. And it's how you choose to take in the experience of life. Of life. Um, I've heard stories of the most horrific things um, happening to people. And they're just, um, they're just, troopers and they come through it and sometimes even though you you want to stay down uh, so, um, someone around you in your life says nope you're not going to stay here and gives you the opportunity to rise up um, I'm going to talk about my new obsession uh, for a while. I'm going to give you a window into my life. Um, I have a new obsession, you guys. Well, yeah, kind of. Um, I don't know how I stumbled upon E.M. Tongi, but um, I stumbled upon E.M. Tongi. I... I love music, but I I haven't watched American Idol um, a lot. Um, the last season I watched was season three, um, when 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 um, Fantasia Marino won. That's the last season I watched, and I didn't even watch last year's. When Iam Tongi won, but uh, y- yes, um, one of the people that react to videos um, that I tune in all the time, uh, King Fam reacts. Um, he's really good. His name is Dennis. I love. I love to. Uh, see Dennis's videos. So, um, I saw Dennis reacting to this E.M. Tongi person, and I thought, who is this? Uh, and then I looked through, and I looked through, and I got to know more, more of his story. So, oh, uh, this this um this young man i'm not going to call him a kid he's almost 20 um this young man he's from hawaii uh he is i like to call him the i'm going to steal gladys knight's name for ruben stuttered which is a, a fellow um, a fellow uh, American Idol alum, uh, and Gladys Knight called Ruben Studdard the Velvet Teddy Bear. So I would say that Iam e. Tongi is the is the soul bear. He's like. He's just like a a big dude, very friendly, a very uh, quiet personality. I have I've never met Ian, but I think he's he's shy. But when he sings, oh my god, you're like, oh my god! And the whole world was talking about this person last year. Anyway. He won American Idol, and his story was he had actually applied the year before. The year before he won, 
he actually applied the year before, but he he got cut the first online round. I guess they have a couple online rounds, and then they have a round where you audition for the judges. And his backstory is absolutely amazing. Um, what happens is... After he auditioned and got cut, um, uh, before he auditioned, actually, his father got sick. Um, I think his father was a plumber, and then he, he got sick and had a stroke and had a heart attack and went into... Uh, kidney failure, and uh, he, Rodney, his father, had bought Ian his guitar because when Ian was in the fifth grade, um, his music teacher was teaching the class ukulele. If any of you don't know what a ukulele is, it's like um, in the guitar family, it's a little, a little version of a guitar. It's it has a bit of a different sound, but uh, so anyway, so and she, his teacher, um, taught him the ukulele, and he just attached to it. See, that's how purpose happens. Purpose happens when you find something and your spirit attached to it. Something in you comes alive. So something in this little boy, um, I would think he was maybe, well, 10 at the time, maybe 9 or 10. Something in this little boy uh, came alive. And then his father, Rodney, saw it and then gave him first um, a cheap guitar and said, if you're serious about this, if you really want to do this, uh, then you have to show me that you're serious. And if you show me you're serious, uh, and then I'll get you a better guitar. And so, um, so he got, eventually he got Ian a better guitar. And then, and then, uh, he auditioned for American Idol first. I think when he was about 16, got cut, and then th that year, um, during that year, 2021, uh, his father succumbed to uh, kidney failure. And then, unfortunately, the Lord took his father home. And uh, so, after his father passed, because his father introduced him to music and because that was a bond that him and his father had together, he didn't want to do it anymore because it was, uh, it brought back so many memories and he would cry. He said, I would cry when I pick up the guitar because I would, um, I would think of my dad and all the videos we recorded together and uh, when I would play the guitar and he'd back up for me. So um, what happened is his mom, now <laughs> Lily, his mom, saw his talent. And although Rodney was gone, she did the mama thing 
and so signed him up again for American Idol. And then and then he went through it and then he ended up winning the whole thing. It's a totally amazing story and yeah, whatever. So for the past month, um, I've been kind of watching EM Tongi videos like over and over and over again. Um, and because when I think of the nature of the beast, the nature of life, um, life, like I said before, life can cause you to give up or life can be a learning experience. And even if you want to give up, sometimes those people around you if they're real friends or real family, don't let you get up, give up. Yes, that's the nature of the beast. Yes, that's the nature of life. But you don't have to succumb to it. You can fight against what life is is um, telling you to do sometimes. But I'm not saying to fight against what God is telling you to do. But I'm telling you, sometimes life will tell you, oh, you can't move from here. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, you can't do that. Um, But there's something inside you that says you can get up from this. Uh, Back to Ian for a second. He said when he... uh, went to the American Idol um, uh, uh, auditions in New New Orleans and saw other musicians, other people, uh, it kind of sparked his love for music again. So sometimes to fight the nature of the beast, the nature that life gives you, you you need other people to combat that and say, no, sometimes you can do it on your own, but sometimes you need other people around you that, that see something in you, that share your interests, that have all this stuff um, to push you. You've got to realize that Life can throw you anything, um, but realize that God's always there to to teach you. And remember that everything that life throws you can be a lesson. And it is a lesson that that you can um, learn from or let take you under. Um, and I keep thinking of Ian, if, if he had have given up, which he did give up. So if Lily had have just seen her son and said, oh, well, he's given up, his father died, I'm just going to let him stay there and didn't sign him up, he wouldn't be... Uh, singing in Australia, going to all these different festivals, uh, doing music online, putting up, putting up videos, and he wouldn't be the success that he is now if his mo- mother didn't see that and push him. It's almost like what his father saw. After his father died, God transferred it to his mother Lily and said, sign him up. And look where he is now. I just saw a live the other day saying he's actually nominated for a People's Choice Award. So that's awesome. Congratulations, Ian. 
Uh, but, uh, like, life can throw you all kinds of things, but you can't help what life throws you, but you can help what you learn from it and how you react to it. And what you, how you, what you learn from it and how you react to it will change the trajectory of your life. Like, it will make your life, because life is a series of decisions. And you can either decide to let life bring you down or let it let it raise you up. Uh, that's that's what life can do to you. But I also said at the beginning of the sermon, I'm going to talk about um, the beast, which is the devil. And what I've what I've learned about the devil is. He mostly preys on you, on your insecurities. So what what I, I believe that there is an enemy. I believe that there is an outside force. I believe that there is an outside evil force. But most of the time in my experience, it's the in the devil plays on what's inside of you, the inner you, the the enemy. Like he 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 preys on the insecurities inside of you. So he'll say to you, "You're you're almost forty. No one will love you." You won't get married. What are you saying? And and because that's an insecurity, he's just because it's somewhere that you're weak. He's going to prey upon that, saying you can't do that because you're this. You can't do that because you're that. So. He's not creating anything, but he's just using whatever negative thing is there and magnifying it to be more than it is. Um, Of course you can get married after 40. Of course you can adopt a child or have kids after 40. Of course, you can be 55 and go back to school. Of course, you can do it. If that's something that God has ordained you to do, don't let the inner, inner, the enemy, the inner you talk you out of it. Because sometimes all the devil has to do is prey on your own insecurity insecurities, the insecurities that you let out, and that's it, he's got you, but what you have to do with those insecurities is not just ignore them and say, you know, they don't exist or whatever, what you have to do is work them out. The devil can't use insecurities that are not there. So basically, um, the first thing you have to do is combat those insecurities with scripture. Because every insecurity has a scripture um, to knock it out, to defeat it. And nothing is more powerful than the Word of God. And then the second thing is maybe getting counseling 
or talking to a friend about those insecurities because your silence about your insecurities or the places where you're weak, that is what's killing you. Your silence is what's killing you because the devil wants you to be silent about your insecurities. The devil wants you uh, to be silent about what you're struggling, struggling with so he can play with your mind on that. So, because the moment you you bring light to something, the moment it can, um, it can be changed or you can get freedom because darkness when 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 darkness is on something it can keep you in bondage but shine the light on that same thing let it out to someone not to everyone but to someone the moment you let it out to someone, the the moment freedom can reign in it, or the moment you ask for help is the moment the the keys to the door unlock unlock, and the way to combat the inner the enemy. The inner, the inner me is to expose it, bring it to the light, bring every insecurity, everything into the light, either with the word of God and talking about it to a trusted friend. I'm not saying to blast it on Facebook. We have a bad habit in this generation of blasting things on social media, saying we're just being real, we're just being real. And sometimes we're just, um, we're just wanting to blast things. Find a few trusted people that you trust to really come to them and say, look, I'm struggling with that. The moment you do that, the moment freedom can start in your life. The reason bondage is reigning, the reason the reason the enemy and inner me is raised it is reigning in your life is all the, the secrecy. Is the things that you're trying to hide. Let out your imperfections so you can be healed. Let them out to God and also let them out to someone that you can trust. And if there's no one around you that you can trust, ask the Lord for a trusted community or a trusted friend. And he will bring that person or those people to you. He's saying, I love you too much for you to stay in those bondage. I want freedom for you today. That's my hope and my prayer for you. That you can handle the nature of life and the nature of the beast inside of you and the demonic beast outside of you. And he's saying, I want you to be able to combat these negative feelings. He's like, I need, I want you to be able to combat the beast. The beast of life, the beast inside of you, and the beast in the spiritual realm. And he said, you can combat it with the word. First, the Word of God, the Bible, or the spoken Word of God, and 
um, letting it out to a trusted uh, group of people and shining the light on your insecurities so that so that so that they can be healed or seek a counselor about them if you need to. You need to not be afraid to ask for help. You need to not be afraid to be vulnerable. Because there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that you're going through that someone else hasn't gone through already. And he said that he said that today is your day. The moment is now. Call that friend. See that pastor. Go to that loved one and say, I'm insecure here. I need uh, help here. And first of all, go to God with it. And then ask the Lord, who do, what human do I go to? Uh, what resources do I go to for this? And he will point you to the resources. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today for the nature of the beast. I hope this blessed you, and I hope um, to see you next week. Um, take care. Bye.